All righty, welcome back to the Son of a Boy Dad podcast. Today it is late August. <laughs> we are here live from HQ3. Short season is over. It's cold today. It sucks. I loved it. I you didn't it. like it? I no. love it. I love Why? It. Oh, love it. So, so nice. The best. What do you like Look about it? Agreeing. It's the best. That's a fat boy thing to say. Absolutely. Mm-mm. Now I can throw on some coats, some boots. I don't know why he likes it. If I was him, I'd be like, tank top season's over. This fucking blows. I'm not a tank guy. <laughs> Stringer season's over. <laughs> I just like I like getting dressy. I like getting, uh, you know, a little more layered. I like the layers. You, got, layers you can't layer nice. in the summer. You look great in the summer, though. Neither of you are fat boys. This is such a fat boy take to have, a Midwestern fat boy take. Oh, I love when it's cold out. I'm a redhead. I don't like hot summer sun, sweating all the time, feeling like, you know, gross. End of the day, you want to shower. Because, but that, what does that have to do with being a redhead? You're just, are you just saying your skin gets different colored? Yeah, I get sunburned. I also sweat a lot. You know, when you're, when you're wearing a shirt and you wear a backpack to work and then your the lower back of your back is soaked because of its the small of your back lack of ventilation on the small the small yes i have a soaked small yeah <laughs> my small gets absolutely soaked do you have a soaked small no <laughs> you cosplay as a fat boy though sass you wish you were a fat boy no, I am. I don't wish I was. I wish I was fucking ripped. You're not a fat boy. I got big old Tommy. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. I bet real fat boys get pissed off at us whenever we fucking claim fat. Dude, I saw a dude reply to Frank to Frank's uh, tweet when he posted the photo in the XL shirt. Yeah, Frank is in XLs now. It's pretty crazy. But someone replied and they were like, "I'm seven X," <laughs> and they were they were like, "I'm seven X six twenty. Swear to God. No way. And I was like, damn. But he said he's, no, he's four, he might be 480 now. He was 620. So good for that guy. But 620 is fucking huge. So he lost a person and he's still four people. Yeah. 620 is big. That's insane. Do you but ever hear that bit for, for that dude? Who's um that great comedian? He's so fucking good. He's kind of alt. He does one liners. He draws the pictures. Dimitri Martin. Dimitri Martin. You ever see his Letterman set? No. Where he talks about, he's like, I don't think the sizing of shirts is right. We have. Oh, I have seen small, this. medium, large, yeah, yeah. XL, XXL, XL, XXL. He's like, it should just be small, medium, large. Whoa. Yeah. Holy smokes. <laughs> American. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Something like that. that. It's so good. <laughs> they should be making more bespoke stuff for the 600 pound life crowd because they all wind up dressing like construction foreman Mm -hmm. like they just have one big like bright yellow smock on you gotta just go to the carhartt store yeah just get fitted up for the rest of your life (laughs) doug's was doug's was rocking carhartt yeah you you when you're that big it's just all carhartt (laughs) it has to be i think that i don't know why fucking nice ass brands don't make limited runs i guess it's not always the richest people that are 700 pounds carhartt's expensive more like carb heart Yeah. yeah Yeah, Car is not like that expensive. Car parts. It isn't? It's like their sweatshirts are pretty pricey. Especially when you're making, I mean, I'm sure a 7X is expensive. I think anything 7X is probably expensive. The it's works in progress probably stuff double is the price of a normal shirt. But some of the, like the regular, like if you just get an outlet, like working gear type yeah. of sh- shit, you could just get some. It's, uh, I don't think, I'm, I'm not just being out of touch here, I don't think. I don't think Carhartt's that expensive. I've been to the stores and like it's, you know, made in China, mass produced. Seems to be pretty much like you. It's a check because they're putting fentanyl in Cardhart now. China. Are they now? Oh yeah, yeah. You have to be very careful. They put it in the pockets. You just <laughs> told me that Abercrombie's putting microplastics in the clothes too. So That's now true I'm too. Starting to wonder about the ingredients. <laughs> I swear to God, list the fucking... <laughs> forum that you're on. The clothes are fucked. But I heard that the U.S. just struck a deal with China that they're they're gonna stop they're gonna stop doing fentanyl. That they had a deal. Trump made a deal in 2018 for them to stop doing tra- fentanyl for like a, a nice a, a little trade package. And then Nancy Pelosi went to Hong Kong and 
then in Hong Kong, she was like, we, we should free Hong Kong. And then they were like, we're going to start making fentanyl again. China was like, fuck you guys. We're sending the fentanyl back over. And then they just renegotiated. And basically, we have to stop putting sanctions on some group that's committing genocides against the Uyghurs so we can stop the fentanyl. Is that the way to pronounce that? The Uyghurs. I've only ever seen that word. I've never heard <laughs> really? it. Really? I've never seen it. No yeah. heard it. It's so crazy that we're like bargaining with like Hong Kong's freedom versus our fentanyl and then the genocides of the Uyghurs versus our fentanyl. Boy, I used to be a Uyghur. I'm glad I, <laughs> I, I still missed am, that because I definitely went through a period where I was wearing NYC and I thought it was a Nietzsche. Uh, <laughs> or like you know, Sean John. Oh, you're saying? Echo. Are you saying Wigger? Yo, no. whoa, bro, what? Easy. I thought I thought you Does were talking it? about like some some race that I wasn't aware of for I some am. group of people. We I are. am, and then he was making a joke based off of that. Oh, I see. And then you All said right. the naughtiest so what word are in Uyghurs? the English language. What are Uyghurs? They're like a <laughs> they're like a Muslim. They're an ethnic sect. group in China. Got it. That has been uh, that has been. Marginalized. Marginalized and, and, and really, I mean, killed, Enslaved, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like for... I think that they built like the World Cup stadiums. They would like take their passports and literally enslave these people. Damn. And I think that there's nasty genocides going on. What do they look like? Uh... <laughs> they typically wear flat brim hats backwards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they cover the tips of the tops of their ears. Like the hat goes over that. That Chunky just sums Air up Force all Lines. Asian people, though. <laughs> <laughs> Are are these people are the Uyghurs Asian? <laughs> yeah, they're Chinese Muslims. They're Chinese Muslim. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't know that existed. I think China is mostly Buddhist and Christian. Yeah, and I think that these are the Muslim brothers and sisters over there. That's crazy. <laughs> what? But they can't. <laughs> can't stop. Conflicting Uyghurs and Uyghurs. It's damn good. It's it's damn good. Um. Because then we can learn about foreign policy, but make it fun. You know, it's a fun way to learn about what's going on in the world. China historically has done a great job of using humans uh, to accomplish amazing feats of architecture. They, they they say that the Great Great Wall is like the the foundations are littered with the bodies of those who built it. Really? Apparently, and I don't know. That might have been that might have been the Mongols. No, it was meant to keep the Mongols out. That makes sense. Yeah. It's crazy that China just doesn't care about fentanyl because they just don't have a drug problem. Can you yeah. tell me what fentanyl is? What is it? Fentanyl is a in medical in the medical world a legal drug that people use as like a pain medication. Yeah, it's like a like if you get like surgery, they'll give you fentanyl a lot. Not a lot of it, but that it's a very common thing. <laughs> it's a common to, thing but to but I'm confused because, right, I remember reading stories about how a cop would open a bag of cocaine by, you know, in the street or it would expel and even just breathing the dust of fentanyl would send them into cardiac arrest. So it's a, it's like a drug, like uh, say like opium or something, but it's popular in as a street drug and then the Chinese will sell the chemical compounds used to make fentanyl. And so there's no regulation on those compounds. And nobody's using fentanyl really over there. So they're just like putting it in shipping containers, sending it to Mexico. Mexico is smuggling it into the United States. So is it? So it's like dirty batches of it. It's not like pharmaceutically pressed. It's like uh, unregulated. and so, so not all fentanyl is bad. There's some fentanyl. Some of it's probably great. That has some of it's yeah. probably fucking incredible. Well, I remember watching in Euphoria. She Rue takes it and says, "Like I never had had a drug until I had fentanyl. It was like the best thing I ever tried." Well, yeah, they think- say it's like um, it's like a thousand times. Or I don't know what the actual number is, but it's like a hundred times stronger than like morphine. Oh, sounds incredible. And I've never had morphine. But mor- but morphine is like a good. thousand times stronger than like Percocet. <laughs> yeah, I have no clue. Percocet right. is child's play. I don't know what the actual <laughs> number is. Well, Percocet's I've never done little... painkillers, Ron. I know that's more your area. Damn, that's more your expertise. Damn, I not, <laughs> not, not recently, bro. You're not dipping into your oxy's anymore. Why? I, I, <laughs> four years ago, I went to Mexico. I got a twenty pack. 
<laughs> of legal of legal painkillers there, and I it, it took me like three and a half years to to do all of them. Mm. That's how I know I'm not addicted to drugs. He That's said good. that when he was when he was in like a bad mood, he'd go over and he would just grab a little bit. And <laughs> Honestly, I could have used some this morning, dude. I was steaming mad this morning. Why? I'm not a materialistic person, to it's be honest. It's fifty with to a hundred times more potent than morphine. Really? I wanted to get that right. Damn. So that people weren't fucking. F- the, he doesn't know anything about fentanyl. That's a pretty uh, big range, though. It our, is. Our anesthesiologist this is only seventy-five audience. times stronger. This is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> this must be a bad batch. It's only forty-nine percent stronger than morphine. No, forty-nine times. Forty-nine times it should be four thousand nine hundred percent stronger. You're right. <laughs> Jesus Christ! That's, That's the crazy. highest percentage. That's crazy. What were you saying this morning? I'm not a I'm not a materialistic person, really. I don't I I, don't, I like the, the only things I really like to spend money on are like uh, experiences or food or or whatever like that. But when I was in Japan, we went to this fucking remote village between the time I was in Tokyo and Kyoto called Kaga Onsen. Mm. This tiny little village perched on the edge of Japan Whoa. that all life has slowed down to a puttering pace. Old ladies kind of shuffling along the road. It used to be a booming town, lots of hotels, and then it's grinded down to about seven hotels. Tourism's not that popular anymore. We got to the hotel, the traditional Royakon in Kaga Onsen, oh. and they took exactly... <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> That was me taking a perfect dump at Kaga yeah. Onsen. They took us to the fucking hotel, and this guy was like, our town has fucking grinded to a halt economically, and one of the only things that we have going in our town is this guy who's a woodworker, and he's like a fourth-generation woodworker. His mm. great-grandfather would fucking find these trees, grind wood down, and can I take you here? Basically, can I please take you to this woodworker's house? And he was like, and you don't tip in Japan anywhere, but he's like, it would be really nice if you tip this guy after he showed you around his shop. So he showed us this shop. It was fucking beautiful. He's just grinding on wood, making tons of bowls. He had thousands of bowls. They said, don't even put anything on social media. He wants to keep it very private and very personal. So afterwards, I tipped him and he's like, this is amazing. You gave me 10,000 yen, which is about $60. I'd like to invite you into my home. Inside of his home, he had a small like room that was basically a shop, and he had his best woodwork that he ever did. And one of them was uh, a vase that was made from the nut of a persimmon tree. Mm-hmm. There's one out of every thousand pounds. Every 3,000 persimmon trees has this marbling, this beautiful marbling. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to fucking support this guy in this tiny ass village and I'm going to buy this vase. It was a thousand dollars for this wood crafted vase that it, it was. I was like, I am supporting the economy all by my fucking self. Yeah. Fast forward to this morning. I wake up with my wife screaming (laughs) at my dog as it just chews this fucking rare ass vase that I got on the fucking remote Japanese countryside from the fourth generation woodworker at the one in 3000 nut of persimmon tree. And this dog is just chewing the fucking vase to shit, dude. I was fucking furious oh, dude no. it's I, I i i normally don't give a fuck about this kind of stuff but i i literally had to i had to vent to you boys i had to get it off my chest because it's fucking did in- you shove your dog's face and shit or something <laughs> i took a shit and then shoved, and your shoved dog's the face dog's in it, face in it. <laughs> covered it in the covered the vase in your shit and so here <laughs> yeah. play with the vase yeah here no you wanted to play with the vase so bad here no no enjoy yourself <laughs> No, no, you don't, no, don't stop playing with the vase now. <laughs> it's because it's covered in my shit. <laughs> this beautiful vase. I don't, I can't even get back there. I can't, I'll, I'll never go Did back. Did you get his WhatsApp? <laughs> There's no WhatsApp. They you know, didn't get his WhatsApp? <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't even get me another one of these fucking vases. Yeah, you're going to have to wait a thousand years. Literally, there was three vases. There was three vases of, of these nut of persimmon trees, one in 3,000. Yeah. It was so fucking <laughs> inferior. Oh, it's yeah, one it's in 3,000. When, did, when did, you, did you bring it back from Japan or did yes, you like, ship it? I brought it back from Japan. It's like this big, beautiful marbling on this vase. How mm. did the dog get a hold of it? 
took it off the it jumped up on the counter and took it off. Damn. Hmm. The kitchen Damn. counter? It was like it was moved yesterday, moved from a kitchen counter to a, t- a small uh, smaller table. Just trying to find And I was right literally I it. said it yesterday. I was like I'll I'll literally lose my shit if that dog ever fucking chews up. And like a prophecy foretold <laughs> this <laughs> dog fucking How old is your dog? Cuz I don't think I've ever heard of a dog chewing a vase. It's a wooden vase. A vase. But it's like, I mean, it's almost shaped like uh, like you'd think a fucking dog toy would be. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, 11 months old, though. That sucks, dude. Yeah, it's tough. It put me in a nasty mood. So thank you for indulging my long ass fucking story. But I had to, it was like in, uh, in Pulp Fiction when he like illustrates how much his his the dad watch. did to yeah, get the watch. Right, right. And it's like this is this it's so remote in Japan. Yeah. The store didn't even have a name. It should have kept a dude's it in your house. house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the dog would have never have. gotten it. It was honestly it was so dildo shaped that yeah. it would probably feel fucking great in oh, my yeah, ass. I'm sure, it feel amazing. Do you guys uh if you if you had if your place were on fire, would you know right now the things you would grab? I've had that thought before. Now, no, because I have more things. Like when I was younger, it would be like, yeah, PlayStation, <laughs> like small shit, like my laptop, because I didn't have a lot of stuff. Yeah. But now I have a lot of stuff. So it would be very difficult. Yeah. I mean, you can't grab everything, obviously. PlayStation, easily. My fishing stuff, probably. <laughs> Nothing. I don't have anything of like importance. You can replace all of that. That that's going to be covered by insurance. Speaking of, do you have renters insurance? I don't know. Probably not. If so, we could do a fucking nice insurance scam. <laughs> I blow up the house. We could I, do something really nice. It's got to be irreplaceable stuff like that. The vase. The vase. The vase would honestly have been my number one thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More than the dog. (laughs) The dog off. Get the hell away from me. I got the the dog for... for, I got the dog literally for uh, Black Friday sale. (laughs) It was 50% off. (laughs) The dog was less expensive than the boss. You can always get another dog, too. (laughs) The Vaz. Maybe if it was a Japanese dog. Right. Yeah. But then the Japanese dog would have been fucking cute and probably like tilted his head yeah. and said something in fucking Japanese. Oh, oh <laughs> that's my fish. Oh, yeah, you cut it. What was the, uh, what was that show? There was a kid's show. Most Extreme the, Elimination Challenge? No, where the dog eats alphabet soup and then it can speak fluent English. <laughs> that's hilarious. I don't think I know that one. It was I, I was like too old to know what it was. My younger sister watched it, mm. but it would be funny if he ate like Japanese alphabet soup. Yeah, but it was like five thousand characters. Yeah, that's just like stomach is full from <laughs> yeah, eating so much Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> how, how does that even work on a keyboard? I really still don't understand how the Japanese type or the especially the Chinese or. Probably a lot of like option shift combos. <laughs> yeah. mm, like control to guess. Alt, yeah. C, Control Alt D. I guess my wedding pictures or whatever. Like, yeah, that's a good one. But aren't, don't you have those digitally? The dog fucking recently ate the the hard drive. <laughs> no, it didn't. <laughs> I, the thumb drive. My mom. I, I, my, luckily, there was another thumb drive at my mom's, and she fucking like sent that up with a and like had a backup made. This imagine dog it, is terrorizing imagine my Imagine if it did that and all of a sudden it was like, drive. oh, you guys look fabulous today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know what I would say. If I, I'm trying to think if I have anything like of real, something that's some things that are really important to me in my apartment. Nope. PlayStation. <laughs> fishing rods. I guess my wife's Bottega bag. Yeah. Ooh, Bottega Veneta. Yeah. Maybe my suit. Mm-hmm. Probably but that would probably be covered in renter's insurance too. Yeah. Well, I wonder how many bags will be covered. You just get a lump sum. You give an estimate of all the things that have you've lost. And like you have a certain blanket amount of coverage. I would keep my suit yeah. because then if I ended up like, not, since I don't have rentals insurance and I had to live out on the streets, I could be like one of those cool old homeless people with right. like a three-piece suit on. Right. Like in the pursuit of happiness. Yes, exactly. Sleep in a bathroom, <laughs> wearing my suit. Sleep on like the yeah train bathroom just in between stops, yeah. rocking back and forth. Stealing rides to New Jersey, stealing rides back. I'd probably keep, uh, grab my Gabe Davis signed photo. I have to say this. I say this with all love. I think that of anyone I know in the world, 
you would have the easiest time transitioning to being homeless. I don't know about that. <laughs> well, it's just not. <laughs> I think I would have a very hard time. Transitioning I don't know if we know. Homeless. I mean, we wouldn't. We might not know. You would definitely know. Well, what would oh, be the signs? Yeah. What were you gonna say? I mean, Something wow, Sass is wearing the same thing today that he wore yesterday. This is not what I wore yesterday. I wonder if he's had the chance to go home. I didn't wear this yesterday, and this sweatshirt's brand new. Dumbass. <laughs> You were wearing, <laughs> he bought these sneakers yes. and he hated them. And he was, he kept asking me like, oh, these are, do these make me look stupid? Like, and I was shocked by that question. I was like, dude, your sweatshirt is covered in stains. I've never heard you be self-conscious about something that you were wearing. These are the My cleanest things on your body. Covered in stains. The one you were wearing in in Cleveland all weekend had white milky stains all over it. I thought you said this was the one I was wearing in Cleveland all weekend. I didn't say that. I said that you, yeah, you did. You wore you that. Were insinuating it. You looked at the sweat. I saw you look at the sweatshirt and go, you wear this every I get day. a little confused of between your Patriots. Um, is that the one you bought in Cleveland? Did you buy that? No. The vintage nope. guy? I bought this months ago. I just never wear it. I was in my closet this morning. What were the milky stains? There was no milky stains. There were milky Dude's stains. out of his fucking mind. That's not true. If you He looked at my outfit and he goes, you have zero flower prints on anything you're wearing. <laughs> I mean, let's get serious here. Where's the paisley? <laughs> you brought- No linen. No change of clothes <laughs> for four days in Cleveland. I literally bring, when I go on the road, I bring every single pair of clothes that I own. I did not see I you I just always wear, land on the same thing. You wore the same thing every day. Now, the first day I wore different pants than the second day I wore the same pants. Uh, the second day I wore the second two days I wore the same pants. There you go, and the same sweatshirt, same Patriots sweatshirt every day. I did wear the same Patriots. And I'm sweatshirt. not knocking you for this. You are. It's minimalistic. You're I'm not. just no, you're saying. I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely feeling knocked. The fact that you would <laughs> be worried that your shoes, the cleanest, brand, most brand new thing on your body, was going to somehow. But the shoes being clean doesn't mean anything. If I had to wear some fucking like. Jordan ones, I wouldn't be like, well, at least they're clean. I didn't know you those had Jordan the ability ones? to be self conscious about what you But I don't, wearing. I can't pull those off. You could. I can't wear fucking fishing pants in Jordan ones. Right. That wouldn't look good. Right. You'd have to overhaul everything. Yes. So for the Jordan ones. And these shoes, those are, are indoor soccer shoes. Exactly. If you, if there's a, a small game of indoor that breaks out, you'll be ready to go. I like those shoes. They're actually, I think the, I believe this is suede, mm -hmm. making it very good skate shoes. Suede good skate does not shoes. tear. Suede has a harder time tearing on the uh, <laughs> on the board, on the grip of the board. You could wear those to skate. Yeah, definitely. You could skate. You could play indoor soccer. These are kind of just the perfect all around shoe. Yeah, but black shoes make me look short as hell, dude. I lose eight inches. <laughs> yeah, me black too. Shoes. <laughs> my shoe, my feet feel smaller than they've ever felt in these shoes, and I have small feet. But like what these are like they're why they're like this thin. These are like ballerina shoes, dude. <laughs> they're like the Chinese foot wrap <laughs> shoes for like. But I'm not gonna do anything shoes. about it. I'm just gonna wear them forever. Until the, the literally the flap falls off. But yeah. unfortunately they're so well made that it'll never happen. <laughs> yeah. I every, wanted the white ones, but you know, what can you do? Every day when I bike in, I bike past the uh, when you're going up Christie, there's like a Uber Eats driver soccer game that's going on mm -hmm. every day. I know that one. Do you yeah. know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? Mm -hmm. I always want to fucking stop and just just gaze at them because you know they're nice as fuck. They are from yeah. like Puebla, Mexico. They were all they were all like like so close to going pro. <laughs> yeah, it's like then, either make the national yeah. team or, or Uber Eats. Bike, yeah, <laughs> bike for Uber Eats. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not fair. It's not right, dude. I city biked yesterday for the first time in a really long time. Got was it amazing? Those. It was great. I, I had never ridden one of the one electrics, of the electric like the silver ones. A game changer. Game changer. Stallions. But uh, dude, it's crazy. It just it it keeps putting it in more in perspective. How fast the Uber Eats guys go. Oh, because they fly by you. I mean, I'm going, I felt like I was going fucking 40 miles per hour. And these yeah. dudes are going so much. They're flying Well, by. they get hurt when they, yeah. they get really, really fucked up. But I mean, dude, even crash. those those city bikes. I mean, if you yeah. crashed on one of those things, immediate Roan had a crash. I did. Really? But it was like, uh, somebody was like, 
coming across me and I was in the bike lane. It was right on Christie Street, uh, the same exact spot where that soccer game goes on. And uh, somebody just came across me uh, just like- Did you guys com- collide? Completely their fault. Howie Day, bro, we collided. Did you throw hands? Uh, no, but I was, I was for a brief second. I was mad at my dog this morning longer than I was mad at that person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, you just got to look out for it. You got to just keep your eyes out, yeah. man. You're going to freaking get someone hurt out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bruising all up my fucking thighs and legs. Cause I went like, I went over my handlebars. Really? How bad is that? That's crazy. Yeah. That's what I was worried about yesterday. Cause I, I, I went from, I was up on 58th street. And then I biked all the way back down to my apartment. It took me like 25 minutes. And the whole time I was like, I'm just going to get smacked by a fucking 18 wheeler and yeah. just explode on but the But cars side of it. go, I, I ran into another bike. Cars go seven miles an hour That's on true. average in New York. That's so fucking slow. Yeah, the bikes fly. The bikes fly. Hitting another bike. But he, w- he literally was like walking across in an intersection going across me. But like it was too late for me to stop. Completely his fault. Are you Un- sure you weren't gazing at the soccer game? No, there was no soccer game. It was on. It was in the evening. I was coming to meet up with Francis. Yeah, we hang. I was coming to, act to the stand to meet up with Francis. Mm. Oh, very nice. When you could have been there. Uh, probably a month and a half ago. Mm-hmm. What'd you say? Very interesting. Sounds right. Yeah. We went out to what was the dinner place we went out the to? The Thai place. Yeah. Uh, soother. 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 Yeah. soother. Sass, unbelievable Thai. It's really good. Yeah, I'm a big Thai guy. You ever been to Klong? <laughs> Klong on St. Mark's? Great <laughs> Thai spot. No. I've never been to Klong. I used to go there when I lived there, but they have a lot of rats outside. It sounds racist, honestly. Yeah, a little bit. Dude, it is dead Great rat Great Thai, season. though. Unbelievable yeah. Thai food. Did you see the fresh new rat that's on the curve going up the bridge? Yeah, I took uh, like three pictures of it yesterday. Yeah, because it was it was intact. It was fully fresh. By today, it's it's, it's gonna been be, exploded. It's exploded, and now it's just going to be a gradual wearing down and and, Until, and becoming nothing. part of the. So sidewalk. it's part of the firmament, like yeah. the fucking Great Wall of China, the outer crust. Yeah, yeah, it's nasty. Yeah. I have the I have that dead bird group chat. Oh, there's a there was a dead bird. There's a pigeon dead. Yes, there's a dead fresh dead pigeon on the bridge. too. Mm-hmm. But I didn't get a picture of it. But I've been trying to send dead rats to the dead bird group chat, and they're about to kick me out of the chat. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> who is fucking, the dead bird group chat? I just have like a dead bird group chat. One of the dudes I don't even know who he is. <laughs> dead bird guy number two. <laughs> oh, it's on like Twitter. <laughs> no, it's a text chat. <laughs> oh, okay. That's just his contact information. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, they almost kicked me out for sending too many rats. You know what I learned today? What? There's a group chat of like 200 women who uh, try to arrange and sort of facilitate private air travel from Aspen to New York City and back. What? Hey, we've got two seats open. Does anyone want them? Like on a PJ? PJs. What the fuck? Are they whores? Yeah. People swoop in and grab them. Not sluts. I'm talking about whores for cash. They pass them around. Really? I think they're sluts, yeah. Isn't that crazy? It's called the slut PJ chat. <laughs> <laughs> slutty pj here's <laughs> that sounds like a like a name of like a early 2010s like uh sandwich shop yeah slutty pj slutty pj <laughs> <laughs> slutty pb and j yeah there's no and it's just got like jelly and peanut butter oozing out of the bread it's <laughs> yeah. a total you gotta eat it with a fork Soaked. and a knife <laughs> Spoon, slutty eggs run don't walk <laughs> so slutty pjs in dumbo <laughs> I hate when restaurants do that. Have some <laughs> slutty eggs. You want the slutty waffle? What? It's actually, like, that has to be a real thing. I think slutty eggs ha- has to be a real restaurant yeah. name. Mm-hmm. It's fucking terrible. Slut is a hilarious word. I'm bringing that back. Slut? Yeah. But I, not shame. I say it in my act now. I'm bringing it back, though. Is right. it shame? I've been or, saying it for a while. In shame? before you brought it back. Are you saying it to shame people? No, no. He is saying it in shame. Or celebration. I'm, uh, I'm mocking the people that do shame them. Oh, uh, yes. I'm going the opposite side. I'm mocking the people that defend the sluts. The, uh... Okay, that's new. <laughs> I don't mind that. Some girls say it as like, oh, you slut. Oh, my God. I know. Your you gotta hair stop. looks so good. You got to stop doing slut. this. I promise it's a, it's a dark path to go down. <laughs> you You'll do too? it for 45 minutes straight. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you can't do it. It takes you out of the conversation completely. Okay, all right, all right, I'll be done. I'm and sorry. I put him in flow state, <laughs> you, you get into this? Yes, too? every single episode. <laughs> 
I'll be like writing my name, full stories going on, and I'm just writing my name in the couch. It's really tasty to touch. I know. Guys, I, I was a little bit of a slut yesterday. Yeah, what'd you do? I, you know how I'm, uh, you guys know how I'm, um, I'm spiraling into a, a full blown crisis. Yeah, supposedly. Yes. Well, it's yes. taking on different forms. That's awesome. We went through our drug phase. Nice to see. We've been in the drinking phase. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, it's got a problem. Sugar phase. Well, that's all. That's just your life. Dude. That was Cleveland. You're you're a big sugar guy. No, I'm I'm calming down on that. I, I realized that that was a problem. So I'm trying to just cut back to to regular levels. But we did a <clears throat> we did a little bit of a slutty retail spending phase yesterday. It was a problem. Where did you shop? Madison Avenue. Jesus Christ. What's that? Upper East Side. The Upper East Side. You went all the way to Upper East Side to shop? I went to the Upper East Side. Did you go after work? Yeah. I was in the area. I'm surprised we didn't. What were you doing up there? Biking. I had a meeting at my business manager's office, just talking cash flow and whatnot. And then uh <laughs> and then I and then he told me, he said, he said, You don't spend any money when you're home. He said, and I said, Well, I'm about to go to Orvis. And he said, Buy yourself something nice. Didn't buy myself anything nice. Just Why the flies. fuck is your business manager saying that? Because I got cash flow like no one, bro. Here, no, you're always I'm stacking faking. bread. I've known that. You're always fake and broke, though. <laughs> I f- dude, I truly don't know how much money I have. <laughs> he he has all of it in this like secret bank account, <laughs> and he's just like, it's okay. You're you're doing okay. What? He, he pretty yeah, this much. Is, this is where you're gonna find out five years from now that he's been he's been Dane Cook brothers, yeah, you're, yeah. Dane you're Cook's Dane brothering Cook's brother. you. This is very Dane Cook brother. Oh, fuck, I hope not. What did you what did you buy on the I almost don't think I can say because it's so bad. He bought a nice jacket. Bought a jacket. A, a coat, coat. A coat. And I bought some shoes. The loafers? I bought some loafers. From uh Manolo That's Manolo correct. Blanc. How did you know that? Did I tell you that? I just guessed. Let's just say he was in the area. There's no way you guessed. I must have said it. Let's just say I was looking at the customer registry at Manolo Blanc, <laughs> and I saw a familiar name come across. Rome was actually in the Upper East with me. We were at the meeting. I we're doing a Manolo joint son of a boy dad bank account. Blanc. <laughs> well, it's as if I heard the advice from your business manager and thought, that should apply to me. I asked him about you. He said, tell Francis, no more spending. <laughs> it's all gone. I agree. <laughs> After that movie theater trip last week. I am not doing so hot financially. <laughs> That's not true. This episode of Son of a Boy Dad is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time, the official ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. And you guys know how much we love Game Time. All right. Game and, Time. And now their brand new feature, Game Time Picks, is making it easier than ever to get to a game. Game Time Sports. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. I mean, I was looking at tickets for the Eagles game the other day, and I saw an amazing Game Time Picks deal for great seats, only like freaking 400 bucks a seat. And for Eagles games, that's highway robbery, okay? That's a good deal. I've, I've got, been scoping the Blue Claws and Cyclones for $4. I'm looking at Book of, Book of Mormon tonight. <laughs> For 150 bucks. Oh yeah. Uh I turn it out. Like a light switch. It goes I've never click. Seen it. It's great. It's US great. Open, Mixed Madness, 42. It's, can't you really there's there's so much good stuff going on. It's unbelievable. You just pull up your chosen event, turn on the GT pick setting on the top of the screen, and browse the best local game time picks deals near you on your game time app homepage. What are you waiting for? I'm gonna buy those Eagles tickets and those blues clues tickets or whatever mm-hmm. SAS is going to today. Cyclones. And, of course, download the Game Time app today and use code BOYDAD to easily score great deals with new Game Time picks. What time is it? Game, game time. time. I'm fine. I'm just not. I'm. It would help me a lot if I didn't do the things that I'm doing. Why not though? It makes because, you happy. No, it doesn't. It makes me stressed. I spend, and it's almost like a compulsion where it's 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 similar, I think, to the way that some people procrastinate if they have a lot of work to do. Uh, they're stressed about the work, so they put it off. I'm stressed about the fact that I have mounting credit card bills and and a huge rising cost of living. And so instead of actually being disciplined, I go out and spend more. So you need something that's going to give you a temporary uptick in comfort and happiness. I guess. I, I don't know what it would be. I, I'm sure this isn't 
unusual. I bet it's you- not because gambling goes up during recessions, or like luxury purchases going up go up while uh, there's a overall financial downturn in the country. Interesting, because people want to have that spike of luxury when things are going bad. I think it's just very human of you. I don't know what it is. I, I uh, it's 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 not great. I don't love that I do this. Well, let's see the jacket. I'll be the judge of that. Uh, I shipped it to New Jersey. So we could avoid the sales tax. To tax avoid the sales tax. Are you serious? Yep. Correct. No way. Yeah, so it's that fraud. is that a nice of a jacket that there's a substantial sales tax that you're trying to avoid? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And did you get those loafers that uh, you were you were show you you showed me the loafers yesterday? I got the loafers. Really? Mm-hmm. I thought that you were going to get them for free or something. No, no, no. You were just you were calling to see if they had them. These, I thought you were setting up like an ad deal. These places don't do that kind of stuff unless you're fucking Kim Kardashian. He was on the phone with Manolo Blanc yesterday. Were you talking to Blanc himself? <laughs> Blanc. 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 Yeah. Manolo Blanc. Put Blanc on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Manolo, Manny. Good to hear from you. Manolo, the guy from. Scarface. Was that his name? Manolo. <laughs> Manolo. Uh, yeah, so I, I did that. And, you know, I get into a weird thing where I bonded with the salesman. They're... Death of a salesman. They are... Nice. Very nice. Just the thought. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what his major uh, belief was? That, that has been kind of a reverberating thought for a lot of fathers, I think. No. His belief was that I'm worth more dead than alive. Because he had a life insurance policy. That's just scary. That's why I don't have life insurance. Facts. It's very That's much the same concept insurance. that um, <laughs> Jimmy Stewart had in, in It's a Wonderful Life. I'll was, give you the moon and the stars. Wait, what the yeah. fuck is Jimmy Stewart's voice? Yeah. Mary. What? Mary. <laughs> Mr. Potter. <laughs> wow. Yeah, damn. That's a good. He has such a recognizable voice, but yeah. I can't recognize it right now. Fuck is wrong Buffalo with Bill, won't you come out tonight? <laughs> um, so what? Uh, wait, we just jumped around a bunch because you said something, then Sass took you off track, and then you followed the thread to your credit. I'm gonna start doing that more. That is my uh, sort of new way forward: is to just uh, not push back against Sass, but to let him divert and follow the new track. <laughs> but what were you? What the fuck are you saying? Because I wanted to. Don't oh. remember? Don't care. It's his world. We're living in it. He's the conductor. Yeah, he is. Choo choo. You are the captain now. Um, well then I'll, I'll take it back to uh, the the slut group chat. I was saying about the salesman. Oh, the, the salesman. Yes, you 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 had a a, a what, kinship. I've noticed that um, the more expensive a store is, the more uh, sort of cards and chess moves the salespeople have to keep you in the game. I wonder why that is. It's not like the guy at Manolo Blahnik can only afford to wear Manolo Blahnik. No. But when you walk commission. in there, huh? Probably commission. But you you get the sense that they these people are like richer than you almost. You yeah. go into a nice ass store, you go into the Bottega store and you get the sense that the saleswoman is like looking down on you. Yeah. Yeah, and you don't want to disappoint them right. or prove to them that you belong in there. I mean, I walked in in a t-shirt wearing my Comedy Connection backpack, and immediately I was like, I'm going to show them that I belong by buying a bunch of stuff. Right. That'll show them. That'll show them. It's, Serves them right for doubting me. It's so crazy. It's such with a- With my soaked small. Well, they're in sale. Then they're in sales. They're in retail yeah. sales. Don't judge a book by how soaked it's small is. <laughs> yeah. Remember when Che thought that the waiters at Le Bernardin uh, make a million dollars a year? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. They probably make like 25 an hour. <laughs> yeah. But it's probably like a desirable place to work. Mm-hmm. But it, it is it is crazy how much... Uh, or just the perception of somebody who works somewhere that's upscale... And how much they have to present themselves that they're like on the same class footing as their clientele. When it's yeah. like, that's not fair. Like, you probably are spending so fucking much money on Bottega if you're in the Bottega store mm-hmm. with what? Like, a, you're probably not even getting a 25% discount. No. Who? 
the the salesperson. I wonder about that. They probably don't get a big discount. What do you think the odds are of how do how would it work to become friends with a salesperson at one of these luxury stores such that they could purchase goods for you right. with their employee discount and then f- ferret them off to you? I don't know. I feel like they that they they must be self conscious because they're used so much. I know. So I'd have to offer something of equal value in return. And that would be an experience. Comedy. A boat ride. <laughs> Comedy would be good too. Ooh. But I just don't know if that's happening that way. Do you think they'd sniff me out? Hey, I enjoyed the half hour we spent talking about that coat I purchased. They also, at this point, already know that I'm a sucker. That I'll pay full price because I did. You have to find them out. You have to case them. You have to kind of follow them around and find them yeah. outside of their work. Yeah. yeah. And then you have to really slow play it. Like in the Telltale Heart when he like took yes. an hour to open up the door. Just You have to really just take your time with it. And Telltale Heart's good. I was going to say the, the Cask of Amontillado. Oh, the Cask of Amontillado says. Did you read that one? I don't believe I did. You might remember it. Yeah. It was all those wonderful short stories of Edgar Allan Poe that we read in like middle school and high school. Poe was fucking spitting. I, if you read Poe in Alan October, wasn't bad either, huh? huh? I said Alan wasn't bad either. <laughs> Edgar was pretty good too. Yeah, Manolo. Did you, did you read Cask of Amontillado? It's the one where he goes beneath the, into the catacombs beneath Paris, I believe, and, and he's convincing this guy that there's a, a priceless cask of wine of Amontillado down there and they go deeper and deeper and deeper and he's somehow the guy's drunk i think and he eventually gets him ahead of him and then he seals off the w- return with bricks because he's a uh, mason and he builds a wall and seals him in and kills him because he's eventually he, he hated the guy for some reason yeah no i haven't read that it's great <laughs> i don't i don't i don't remember we read like one edgar Allan poe book probably was, the fall of the house of usher i don't know what it was or the crow the crow was that one? Oh, the raven. The raven. Jesus Christ. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Yeah, no, I don't know. I don't think I read that. Quoth, some visitor. Quoth the raven nevermore? Quoth the raven nevermore, yeah. Nah, does not ring in a bell. Nah, uh, distinctly I remember. I, I can tell, yeah, I, I can tell you remembered. It was in the bleak December. <laughs> That's such a great poem. You'd love it. We gotta go to Baltimore just heard it. in the fucking <laughs> in, yeah. in October. We should do. Go we where? Sh- Baltimore. Why? Where, where I'm Poe. gonna be in Baltimore in October. That's where Poe's from, bro. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be there in October. Poe had a house there. Did he? Really? Yeah, that's why the Ravens are. Is that why they're the called Ravens? the Ravens? I think you're right about that. They have that. three mascots named Edgar Allen and Poe. Oh, very nice. Wow. Catch some ball, learn a little Edgar bit of Edgar Allen Poe and Stavi Baby. <laughs> <laughs> two literary goats <laughs> of all time. Um, did you see that uh, there's a new uh, airline that you can pick your seat to not sit next to a man? It's like four women, so they don't sit next to dudes on the airplane. Mm. Bumble Airlines. <laughs> Bumble? Yeah, that's, that was exactly what I was thinking. No, yeah. I haven't seen that. That's weird, though. It's so weird. Like, are dudes getting that, are, are dudes that creepy on airplanes? I sat next to an attractive lady on the plane going back from Cleveland, and I didn't even look at her direction the entire flight. I went like this. <laughs> I faced the window the whole time. Yeah. Said, what? Please let me know if I'm making you uncomfortable. <laughs> my, my lady. Yeah. <laughs> my queen. And then I woke up. I fell asleep and I woke up and her boyfriend was checking on her. Being like, how's this fucking guy treating this you? Guy being, is this guy yeah. cool? And I'm <sighs> just fully asleep. Gargling. Yeah. Listening to the rise and fall of the Third Reich <laughs> on full volume. Is this incel treating you bad? <laughs> you woke up with a morning boner listening to Goebbels. <laughs> that's fucking nasty oh my god yeah i don't know why i don't know what it is about uh i've i mean dude i've sat in first class and there are some like douches that sit up there who like would absolutely try and like fuck like i've seen dudes clearly try and fuck the flight attendants that's so weird yeah it's always it's mm. it's even weird to me to to be like so where are you headed yeah They'll like, stand. You know up. where I'm headed. Yeah, we're all going to the same place, <laughs> dude. They'll they'll stand up and they'll go 
stand over where the flight attendants sit and like chat it up with them. Where she's just playing Candy Crush, yeah. drinking a yeah. Coke Zero. Let her live. It's super uncomfortable. It's so weird. I actually took a video of a dude on the plane the other day. Doing what? Talking. He was really pissing me off and I wanted to send it to my friends. Let's see the video. I'm not going to play it. Why? Because- uh, Is there incriminating information? No, I think you're probably just not supposed to do that. No, that is bad. Yeah. Who gives a fuck? Dude, this guy could not- Just talking the entire flight and talking to a dude that was three rows ahead of him. <laughs> like leaning into the aisle. <laughs> Being like, so where are you working now? <laughs> like for the whole flight. And he's at one point his wife turned to him. He was, he was, no one wants to hear you talking. She said that? Yeah, and he was, he's like, come on. <laughs> this dude was insane. I mean, it was crazy. That's bad. Running into a stranger on a plane. They, were, like, dude, they didn't know each other. What? They didn't know each other. So why do you say where you they working like, now? They, they like met while boarding the flight. This dude was this dude was trying to talk to anybody who would listen to him. That talk. is one of the worst flavors of human being. It was being. so obnoxious. But isn't it funny to think, you know, air travel, I would think that in the early days back when you could smoke on commercial airlines and they would shave a beer and ham. Nobody slept on any of those flights. Airplanes yeah. were like being at a bar. Well, you'd also have to wear like a three-piece you'd suit. You wore a suit and uh yeah, and and everybody was talking to everybody. Yeah. And the flight attendants would fuck you back then. Yeah, absolutely. I I think the flight attendants will fuck you now, but I think you just got to be like real high status. Like you got to be 360 at least if you're going to fuck the flight attendants. One time a flight attendant rode on a, a Delta napkin her number and gave it to me. Really? But she was not attractive. So it's and not then bragging. You took the napkin and you went. I blew my nose with it. Handed and it handed back it to it her. Back and said, Could <laughs> you throw that out, please? Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's the same type of situation that you're trying to get into at the Manolo Blahnik store. Correct. Like she could have, this could have been a gateway drug to free flights for you. For posterity, yeah, she's probably got a, just a basket of 360 tags in her fucking. Do you think that backpack? Do you think that's true? You yes. can get perks from a flight attendant. A hundred thousand percent. Dude, my what? friend's mom is a flight attendant. He just Bo's mom's a flight attendant. He just flew to Kenya for free. You get a buddy pass, and they'll they'll let you fly in Delta anywhere. One. Don't you need to be in Delta One? Don't you, you need to, to be a, uh, a direct family member? Uh, no, beneath no. a certain no. age. No. no. No, that's not true. You can be <laughs> anyone. They can make it's buddy pass. It's Tell not. me, I gotta go fish out that fucking napkin. <laughs> <laughs> but they also, but also, it's not a guarantee that you're gonna get maybe on any of those flights. Maybe she's had you're some on work standby. Done. But it, it's like there's still enough where you can get free flights at any time, anywhere if you're on the true buddy pass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like especially domestically. It's I crazy. I, I yeah. It only lasts until you're like 24. Yes, exactly. The family one. And then you... But I think that there's just... every bump down. I yeah. think you get just a normal... I think everyone just gets a one other person. Because like if it's the family one, if it's for your kids, what about your like husband or wife? Husband and wife is always going to be the top status. Right. And so if someone doesn't have a husband or wife, I think they can gift that status to whomever they, they please. Oh, really? I think so. I think that you don't only get that status. It's not like right, that, marital that, rights. That, that would be, you can't just say you have to be married because right, that's some unfair. people have domestic partners. and Common law marriage. Yes, exactly. It might not be yes. on paper. We, were, we neglect to mention long -time the common lovers. law marriage. Long time lovers. Yeah. Oh, so I can't give this buddy pass to my long time lover? Uh, <laughs> I can't give it to my part time lover? Yeah. This is the only love I have in my life. Yeah, Where's what if you're a bitch? fucking Mormon? <laughs> Yeah. But if you're a Mormon, do you have 17 passes? You must. You're just handing them out? You must. Or what or if do you're Mormons pimp? like not believe in planes? Or is that, uh, what's the one that they don't use any electricity? Amish. Uh, Amish. Amish. Yeah, the Mennonite. Mennonites. Or, yeah, they, they don't. I think Mennonites are They have to take the Amish. fucking Wright brothers plane. They have to pedal. Yeah. <laughs> they work it. <laughs> they just need to hang glide. Or the Jews on, on Saturday, on the Sabbath. Mm. They can't even do buttons, can they? They definitely do planes, I'll tell you that. Okay. Every flight I'm on, there's at least 15 Jews. But you Hasidics. never fly on Saturdays. You don't fly on Saturdays, yeah. True. You would never that must be why they're so packed on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Every single Jewish person's trying to get out of their fucking location. One time I took a flight from Vancouver. It was a red eye from Vancouver back to New York. And uh, it was, I would say, a full half of the plane was was uh, Hasidic 
Orthodox Hasidic Jews. Did they have their hats in the cases? Correct. So all the overhead space was gone. And I was sitting in a... And forgive me if... I, I, I have a hard time knowing the difference between Orthodox and Hasidic. I know that's different. We know what you're talking about, though. Yeah. But um, you can just say the big hat Jews, <laughs> the curly fried Jews. You can say that, <laughs> and I will agree that that is the group to whom I am referring. Uh, but they, I was sitting in the in the seat that had no. It was you know, there was like a al- an alley between me and the next row, and nothing in front. Emergency exit. Yep. Big plane. I'm on the left. In the middle is where the flight attendants are chefing up whatever the microwave food and so this was a place that people would kind of gather to wait for the bathroom or stretch their legs Mm -hmm. and i'm sitting there and i'm trying to sleep because it's a red eye and i had a gathering of you know four or five young jewish boys at all times Playing patty cake. Oh, they're they're a they're a rowdy bunch. Ste- Mischievous, stepping yeah. on my feet. I mean, they weren't gonna sleep. They don't. I don't think they do sleep. <laughs> I think they're on like eight hundred milligrams of caffeine at all. They're times. on prime. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, they were. They were. It just that was my memory of that flight. And you know what? I love. I loved them. Yeah. <laughs> they are a rowdy group of guys. They had great energy and spunk and pizzazz. Have you ever seen the videos of Curious Oil? No. It's like a town in yeah. Pennsylvania or We used New to York. watch those on the Yak, right? Y- yeah. And they it, like harass people. It's the most mischievous uh, gaggle of Jewish boys. Really? So mischievous that it borders on criminality. You Ooh. know when like people say like boys will be boys? Mm-hmm. They're talking about Hasidic Curious Jew oils. boys. Boils will be boys. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> what they're referring to. Mm-hmm. Those dudes will like they'll see like a they'll see like a dude in like a golf cart and they'll go over and they'll just tip over the golf cart, rip what? the dude out of it, They're start like, driving it yeah, around, surrounding him. <laughs> it's like all golf. It's all golf cart related. Videos. They're so really? funny. It's it is. it's some of the funniest videos ever. Well, that's kind of fun. But also, it's like it has a it's like a Edgar Allan Poe poem. It has an ear of eeriness or a just a a touch of eeriness. Just huh. a. A oh, taste of eeriness. Maybe sort of like that movie, um, I, I, uh, Don't Worry Darling. Did you ever see that? No, I Harry didn't. Harry Styles. It was pretty good. I actually thought that was a good movie. I don't watch it. Don't Worry Darling. I can't remember you know what a movie in retrospect I th- I thought sucked? Or I knew it sucked at the time and then as the years go on I just realized more and more how much it sucked and I can't even believe it was ever critically acclaimed. What? La La Land. Really? Mm, I love that movie. What? Yeah, I never saw it. I've watched it probably. But I, 10 I, I've times. seen the clip. I've seen the clip of the camera moving fucking eight thousand times. That movie where she's sucks. dancing and he's playing the piano. Oh, so that's fun. bad. Really? Mm, I liked it. I liked the music. I hated the music. I hated the music. I hated the plot. I hated the uh, setting. I hated the idea that like Hollywood was like just sniffing its own dick, loving that movie. It's like, oh, it's about us. That's really who we are. Like we're just uh, in La La Land out here. Mm. I it makes my skin crawl. If we're talking about good movies that that we didn't enjoy, Dunkirk for me, you couldn't like it? like it. Couldn't get into it. It might movie be was worth way too slow. It might be worth it. a second watch. Tarantino says it's the most well shot movie he's ever seen. Yeah, I could see that. But I don't care about that. Harry Styles? Like, I don't care about, like, cool shots. Seems like you're avoiding all Harry Styles movies. Yeah, I think that was part of it. I I can't get it. I can't take Harry Styles seriously as an actor. But they also had Barry Keen. Barry Keen's in it, too. Yeah, and I don't like him either. Nobody speaks for the first 15 minutes of that movie or something crazy. Really? Exactly. There is not a word spoken. Shit's ass. I could have written that movie. (laughs) Long shot in boat. Missiles landing on beach. All right, I guess. Well, yeah. Let's just do that one for like thirty minutes. I guess that'll kill half the movie. Well, it's such a great story, though, that the fishing boats came to get them off the beach and rescued the British army to carry on the British Empire in their fight. Is that World War One? Two. Two. Yeah. Interesting. Big time too. It 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 is one of the most pivotal wrong decisions of the war from Hitler. Because they had them, they could have just driven them into the sea. 
Hitler was just getting his dick sucked by Ava Braun snorting meth. Yeah. Have you gotten to that part of Rise and Fall of the Third not, Reich? No. Dunkirk's going on, and he just has a fucking full length mirror full of meth, and he's just getting his balls gargled by Ava Braun <laughs> mm-hmm. while he fucking rails meth. No, I like, haven't gotten to that. Phew, there's problems on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> we've got them surrounded no no wait wait don't go can't you see i'm busy yeah he doesn't he doesn't finish the job they don't finish yeah and they had him well he finished yeah i know i know the finish. story is good i just didn't like the movie the movie just didn't do it for me and i love war movies you gotta watch that guy Ritchie movie about the brit that that's another one that sucks off ungentlemanly the warfare yeah ministry that one's a that was an interesting one that tells an interesting story about how the British subverted the Nazi. Mm-hmm. I kind of have a hard time getting into British movies as as a whole. Why don't you swallow that yawn? Brother? They're dumbass accents. That was me reacting to Dunkirk, <laughs> yawning, <laughs> falling asleep. Why don't you suck that yawn back into your gullet? Well, because I watched Interstellar. And then I was like, what's some other Christopher Nolan movies? And then I threw on Dunkirk and I was like, not even close to Interstellar or Oppenheimer. Nolan does not miss often though, bro. See, now you're making Francis yawn. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. I knew that was what was going to happen. It's always my fault. Because he's an empath. (laughs) He caught your yawn. What is the worst Christopher Nolan movie? For me, it's Tenet. Tenet sucked. I couldn't couldn't handle it. It's impossible to follow. And Tenet? everyone's like, well, you got to watch it again. I'm like, that's not how movies should work. Although that's I think I just said, just said that about Joe yeah. Dunkirk. I really do believe that. That's what they say about, uh, did you, did you see that video about Dave going to pizza restaurants? And uh, they're like, why, this is why it's problematic that Dave rates pizza restaurants after just going in once and not announcing himself. And they did this long story about how the guy who started the food critic business was like a New York Times writer. And he would go to restaurants three times to make before he wrote a review to make sure that he like didn't have a bad Give him service. A fair shake, they, yeah. Giving him a fair shake. But I completely disagree with that premise. Like if you're trying a restaurant for the first time and it sucks, you're not going to be like, well, let me give it two more shots. Mm-hmm. Like if it yeah. sucks, it sucks. Like yeah. they should be giving you, putting their best foot forward every time. And the best should- restaurants are good every time you go. 100%. Yeah. And so I just completely rejected that premise that, that that's why his pizza reviews are bad mm. just because this one food critic wanted to give some fucking asshole in the 1940s a chance to make his baked Alaska three times. Dude. Yeah, just every every baked- pizza place I've been to that's good is always good. Exactly. I've never been to a pizza place where like one day you go and it just sucks. Exactly. They're I got my spots. They just wanted to hate on Look what you're doing to Francis. We were making him yawn through. It's going to be an epidemic now. I haven't yawned in the last five minutes. <laughs> True. This is there's a, a there's a clock underneath this video or the people who are listening to their podcast. I yawned one. once and Francis has yawned like eight times. But since he catches then. them. <laughs> you know that he catches. That's he's on a, him. He's, he's that's like empath. some sort of disease. No, if he was a psychopath. I told you um, I loved you in the last episode, and that is why I am getting the yawns from you. That's creepy. And you, didn't like um, it. you don't like it. You don't like being told that. Um, you can't accept love. You can't accept that you are loved either. No. All right, well, we got to wrap this up. Okay. Because we have a guest coming in. Cool. Son of Where a weird at? Oh, okay. All right. Well, uh, my Don't Tell set comes out tomorrow. So please listen to that or watch it and be nice. Because if it doesn't go well, I will kill myself. Thank you. <laughs> please buy tickets to Pop Punk in Philly. I need, I need this to go well. And I need you guys to start actually buying tickets. I, you guys have been acting like you're buying tickets. But you are not. And I will also kill myself. I'll join Sass in the sweet release. Don't join me, bro. <clears throat> Across see, the river Do you see what I wrote there? I didn't know. It love says you. I love you. <laughs> I can't see anything. I literally don't see a single word. Or Which letter. Is, it's why this is why it's so hard for me when you're when you don't accept my love. I'll be in Austin <laughs> uh September nineteenth weekend, I believe, at the Creek in the Cave. Tickets at punchup dot live slash Francis Ellis. Alrighty, we'll see you guys uh, next episode. Goodbye.